Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my series on design for 3D printing. Contrary to popular belief, you cannot 3D print anything. You must design your part for 3D printing. In this series, I'll give you tips and tricks about ways to get the best quality part. I'll cover basic topics as well as dive into engineering and manufacturing. In this part, I'm going to cover ways to avoid support. It should be no surprise by now that I hate support. It's slow, it's wasteful, and it mars the finish of your part. You should always avoid support and cliches like the plague. When do you need support? Typically, anytime a portion of your part exceeds about 60 degrees from vertical, or 30 degrees from horizontal. To avoid pushing this to the limit, I try to limit angles to 45 degrees. You can see on this check block I made that no support was required all the way to 70 degrees from vertical. However, the surface of the slope isn't very pretty past about 50 degrees, so try to limit your angles to 45 degrees most of the time. Obviously then, it goes without saying that, okay, I'll say it, horizontal overhangs are bad. This is why we printed the table upside down in episode two. It's also why we would never want to print a hollow wedding cake. Since I mentioned it, let's use the wedding cake example. If you have a solid wedding cake, you simply print it in its normal orientation and you have no problem because the horizontal faces aren't overhangs. The model will be full of infill, which is okay because it's less dense than support. You can't eliminate the infill, however, because then you have a hollow object with horizontal overhangs inside. If it's hollowed out or printed without support, the whole thing will fail. And you can't print it upside down either because that's the exact same problem. Here's a solution that I suggested to a student a while back uh, who was encountering this wedding cake problem. This is an appropriate time to split the model and assemble it later. This part was only going to be subjected to mild tension as a lamp end cap. If the part is split like this with a couple of revolved cuts at 45 degrees, then it nests together and locks in place when held in tension from either end. We can also print it with the flat faces on the bed and nested together for more time and material savings. Now, I don't typically recommend printing multiple parts at once, but these three nested circles will almost be joined together at the bottom edges of the bed. So they won't be inclined to move, and a mild fusion here is actually not only acceptable, but ideal. They can be separated later. I'll cover why we don't print multiple parts in a separate video. Back on support, though. Orientation takes care of a lot of support issues, like the proverbial table example that I mentioned in an earlier episode. If you can't take care of support with orientation, maybe you can go back and redesign your part. Here's a pedostatic tube for my truck. The requirements of the tube were this. It must stay attached to the hood, and the two air channels must remain clear all the way from the front to the back of the tube, and it must withstand up to 150 mile an hour airspeed. The normal orientation is like this. The problem is that support is required in these places. The hollow portions of the tube don't need support because the tubes curve gently enough to support themselves. The static channel span between here and here is short enough that the filament can bridge the gap as well. Ideally, I wanted the filaments to travel up the stem and then around the tube so that any torsional loads from a crosswind could be handled. There was simply no perfect layout for this shape. So here's a secret that I recommend to you whenever you're dealing with the structure and support problem. Split the model along an axis. This pitot tube is bilaterally symmetric, so I split the model in half and then laid each half flat. All my support was eliminated, and the filaments now went around the base, up the stem, and the tube. All conditions were satisfied, as was I. This is the same technique I recommend when people need to print spheres or similarly challenging objects. If you try to print a sphere, you'll always end up with a little flat spot at the base where it touches the bed and you'll need a raft and maybe some support to simply increase the bed contact area and to add stability while it's built. Now, if you split a sphere in half, you can print each hemisphere like this and then reattach them later. Someone once came in with a large complicated molecule model that had lots of little balls all over everywhere. I suggested she split the model up 
and like this, and it worked beautifully. I'll always be against support. It adds time, it adds waste, and it mars the finish of your part. Always do what you can to eliminate it. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?